Hi, welcome to this tutorial from tdcat.com. Today we're looking at the Machina Micro Mark II controller together with the Machina 2.3 software. The first thing I'm going to do is load up that software and get the controller fired up. So I'm totally new to this. So you might ask, uh, knowing that fact, you might ask, why am I doing a tutorial on this? Well, over the last couple of weeks, I've been bringing myself up to speed and watching my own, watching... Um, a load of videos on YouTube, etc., about uh, about this, and learning about it, and learning how to use it. And something I've noticed is that most of the videos out there are for the studio controller, and that's nice. Nice if you've got the space for it, and nice if you've got the nine hundred pounds to spend on it, which I don't. So um, I've, I'm using the micro, and I've had to kind of transpose everything in my mind to to basically work this with the limited buttons and the limited screens and um, displays that you have on the micro. However, you can do most of it. So I'm not going to use this as a drum machine uh, today, or, or drum pads. I'm going to use this, I'm going to use the controller here as uh, I'm going to go through the process of loading up an instrument and opening uh, scales and chords and arpeggios. And in amongst that, hopefully, you'll learn some sort of stuff as well about changing other things, you know, volume, tempo, all that type of thing. So let's get started. And the first thing I want to do is browse for an instrument. So if I press on browse here, it tells me that I've got 14,300 instruments. Now there are different areas that you can browse in. So you can browse your projects, you can browse your groups, a sound, an instrument or an effect or a sample, but I'm going to go for an instrument. So you don't click on it to carry on, you press the right button here to carry on. And just to point out at this stage, these function keys across the top here are of course related to these tabs. Uh, they are soft keys basically, so as these tabs change here, filtered list and user, these the, the functionality of these three keys also changes, which doesn't actually seem that obvious when you first start using it. it doesn't the, 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 They're kind of not close enough or something. I don't, I don't know. I didn't, it wasn't obvious to me anyway. Maybe that's just me. So we've pressed the right button now, and we've now got a choice of product. And if I scroll through the products, you'll see that in the software, as we scroll through, it gives you a preview of them, even though you haven't actually loaded it in, which is really nice. So you can go through and uh, choose the one you want. So in this case, I'm going to load up Alicia's Keys because it's a nice uh, nice piano sound and that's no, there's no sort of better way to demonstrate uh, arpeggios and uh, notes and chords on uh, than on a piano, in my opinion. So we're going to scroll through again and you'll notice that at this stage there are options if you scroll through, but there's nothing initially, it's just a dash. So I'm going to change from filter here to list I'm going to list now the presets. That's how we move down to our list of presets. And you can just load in the basic basic one by going here. Or I'm going to load in a preset which sounds a little bit more, a little bit sort of bigger, if you like, which is the concert hall preset. So if I press, that loads it in. And we've now got a sound uh, associated with this pad. Wonderful. However, none of the other pads are assigned. We just have that one. That's no good at this point. So we need to change the microcontroller to keyboard mode. And we do that by pressing shift and pressing pad mode. And that basically locks it into keyboard mode. And we now have all our pads assigned to different keys in the chromatic scale. And obviously as there are 12 in, in that scale, we have our two root notes here, and then 12 up is one octave higher, so... Doesn't leave us much room to work with anything there, does it? I mean, you're kind of... You can, you can do some stuff, I suppose. Um, but there's not too much area to, you know, not too much uh, space to move around. So we can turn off browse there now. Uh, so we want to bring that down and want to basically collapse this down so that we're only covering the uh, the notes required for a particular scale. So the major scale would be, you know, um, would be those notes. So you don't need these. So you want to collapse this down. And the way we do that is by holding down pad mode and then scrolling here, 
we've got our root note of C3, which is fine uh, for this. But we scroll across, and we've got, there's our scale type, our chromatic scale. And we're going to just change that option to our major scale. And we now notice that these are now in sections of eight, because that's how many notes in a major scale. Now this is much simpler on the studio. Uh, I've seen the tutorial from Matt Saletti. He did a wonderful job. And thanks very much, Matt, for all your tutorials on native instruments and uh, their products, because it's been a huge help over the last couple of weeks for me. Uh, <clears throat> so that's the only reason I'm doing this, really. Uh, it's quite a similar tutorial to one of yours. It is because, again, I'm saying about doing this on a microcontroller to help those using this particular controller. <clears throat> so we've now got our major scale uh, loaded in. So let's change it. Let's sort of change it to a different type of scale. We've got different options. So you can press pad mode and that kind of gets a bit awkward on the micro because you have to press pad mode and scroll through stuff and turn stuff. So what you can do is if you press pad mode and then press control, that actually sort of locks down that particular, the control that you're wanting to use at that time. So I'm not sure whether that's, whether it's to do with that or control, not, not certain on that, but it means you don't have to hold down pad mode now. I can scroll through the options. So it's our major scale. So let's go to our pentatonic scale, minor pentatonic. I love the minor pentatonic scale. Always sounds nice. And if you want to release that again, just press control. But we're now going to break this down even further and go into chords. So we're going to assign each of these buttons, each of the pads, to a chord. So again, pad mode, hold that down, and move across to the next section, which is chord mode. You'll notice that's off now. So if we turn that again, we first have the uh, standard chords, standard chord set. So I think this is set currently to 135. It is, yes. A chord type is 135. So for a C, that's basically going to play C, E, and G. Oh, no, not on that particular type. It went wood on a major chord, sorry. Uh, let me go back to a, let me go to a major chord here. Make it a bit simpler. So that's just playing C, E, and G. Now you, you can change that to be... You know, one four five or one three five seven. So you get you can start sort of playing around a bit. But what's even better than that is it is you don't just have to use those kind of preset preset chords. You can go and turn the chord mode. Hold on, I'm going to have to go back here and find there's the chord mode to chord set. And we now have almost like a kind of chord wheel function, which you can work around and sort of go. Now in a chord wheel, there's only sort of certain chords that, um, that, are, that work together. So that's, you've got a number of options in both major and minor here to select. So if you hold down pad mode again, and in that chord set, you move across one. This is our major one, major two. We've got eight of these in major, and then in minor as well. If we go to minor. You can see that we're working round here and just going. And then equally, you can kind of, or you could almost do a bridge by going. Kind of, you know what I mean? And you go back to the start again, or verse and chorus. Uh, but the great thing about this is that although this is technically cheating, and you could say, well, you know, you want to learn, you want to learn the actual keys and do it on a keyboard, do it on a proper piano to get more feeling in it, and that's true. It does. It doesn't have quite the same feeling as being played with different all different velocities. But you can, of course, change that later uh, once you've put it, once you've laid it down. The great thing this does is it gives you ideas about sort of, you know, you start, you just start playing those chords. 
and, and immediately kind of tunes start coming into your head and you start thinking, okay, well, it could develop that into something. So it gives you that sort of simple way of laying down some chords and, um, and being able to uh, hopefully come up with something a little bit more substantial. That's what I found anyway. So now let's have a look at the um, arpege arpeggiator uh, side of it, which is done with the note repeat button. So we now have that in a minor, a minor, uh, sorry, a major chord. Uh, no, that was minor, wasn't it? We did it in minor chord. So we're going to put it back to major one in our chord type. Uh, in fact, no, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll go back to our chord set and we'll change that to 135. 135 there. So you see what I mean? It's a little bit more fiddly in the micro than it is on the studio. So there we go, just a standard chord. So if we now take our note repeat and hold down, I'm going to use another hand for this now, hold down note repeat. We have our 1 16th arpeggio, so I'm going to change that to 1 8th. And another uh, thing that's hopefully helpful, uh, how to change the tempo. Well, how do you change the tempo, the overall master tempo? Well, it's very straightforward. Just press main and you get three options across the top here, volume, swing and tempo. Switch to tempo there and you can reduce the tempo down there. And you'll notice that as I do that, the, the master tempo on the software changes as well. And then, um, sorry, no, don't turn off main. Then you go, you press control to come back out of that. So we now have, if we now hold down note repeat again. But you can use the control button with note repeat so you don't have to hold it down because it's awkward holding it down. So if I press note repeat and control. So it's a bit, bit more straightforward like that. Turn off control there. And uh, you can make, you know, I think we've kind of gone through quite a few things there. If you want to uh, change the, I mean, the chord side of things works well for piano, uh, but it also works great for something like pads. So if we wanted to change group, we, and we can leave the piano in there and we can change our group. So hold down group and then tap into our second group. And we now have a completely sort of blank canvas again to work with. We can just quickly go through and go back to, uh, in fact, we don't want to do that. We want to go to filter and then move We're on instrument. That's fine. So our product will change to something like FM8. FM8. And we'll change it to our, oh, in fact, I'll no, just go do all, all in there. And then we can actually move through there. Although we had a dash there at the start, we can actually move through here and filter by keys or pad. I think, I think they're in synth pad on FM8, aren't they? Yeah, synth pad, there we go. And subtype, what, type, what sort of pad do we want? So chord pad, well that, work, that seems a, a logical choice. And then our mode, our chord, well we don't need those options, so we can now just go to our list and see how many we've got. Well, in FM8, with those filters in, in um, with those filters in, we don't have a choice of too many, actually, so that's good. So we'll just go with we'll just go with this. I don't know, don't know what they are. There's so many to choose from. And then again, in our remember that the uh, keyboard mode is is associated with the group. So if I go back to group one, which is the keyboard, uh, so the piano, we're we're already in keyboard mode here. But in group two, we're not. Or group B, I think it is, isn't it? It's group B. They're not one, one and two. They're group. Um, a and B. We're not, so we have to go back into there by pressing shift and pad mode again. So that's already sort of sounds like a chord essentially, um, so we can just change that to a different scale maybe uh, and go to, our, go to our minor pentatonic again. <laughs> And then let's go into uh, a third group, so C, group C, and load in, um, load in a drum into there. And 
I'm not going to load in an instrument at all. What am I doing? Browse and browse. No, that's not what I'm going to do. Sorry, filter. And then go back to here and load in. In there. Move through. Actually, I'm doing that wrong, aren't I? I want to now list those and load in just an 808 kit. Okay, great. So now if we press play, we should have a standard pattern in there. So I'm going to take out that one that's got, I'm going to actually do that in the software. You can, you can get through and do that elsewhere but I'm going to do it in the software for now. There we go. So I want that out. And you can change patterns by um, holding down, let me just stop that. Press stop that there and hold down pattern. And you can see there are two patterns assigned uh, to this already. Obviously you can add more if you want, but these are the two sort of factory defaults if you like. So you can change those as it's playing. And now, if we go back to, I'm just going to uh, turn the, uh... so there we go. That's um, uh, a look at uh, getting through uh, loading in instruments and looking at chords, or the arpeggiator, and, um, and also just a quick look at groups as well on the Machina Micro Mark II. If you've got any comments or questions, and if you've got any better ways or quicker ways of doing things, because as, as I said at the start of this, I'm totally new to this. So um, uh, this is something I've just been looking at over the last few weeks. So if you've got anything, any ways of doing all this stuff better that you can suggest and you're thinking, oh my God, why are you doing it that way? It's such a rubbish way of, of going about it. You can make that so much easier for yourself. Then please let me know. And, uh, and as I say, if you do have any questions, come back to me and I'll try and answer them for you. Thanks a lot. Bye.